What was the black market in your school? And my friend had several get rich quick schemes that never paid off. A few that come to mind. We got the idea of breeding my and his dog to get puppies and sell them. So he brought his dog over and we locked them in my room to get the deed going. After about 30 minutes we got talking and realized both our dogs were castrated and males. So we dropped that plan. Second plan was when my older brother got us around high fee stereo in his room. This was 1999, so that was still somewhat uncommon. Me and my buddy charged a fee for people to come and watch movies cinema style at my house. Third, when we found a toy in the room of my friend's mother we charged a fee for people to come and see his mom's toy. This screams teenager in the 90s lmao. Having been a teenager in the 2010s, boy have times changed. Energy drinks in middle school. There were two kids who just happened to have parents who owned liquor stores in the town. One kid started taking stuff from their parents supply and selling it out of his backpack. Other kid caught wind of it and figured he should get into the game too. Honestly, the other kid finding out was the best thing for me because the market adjusted just like it should have. Kid 1 was selling warm monster energy drinks for $5. New kid came in and sold them for $4. Kid 1 came back with 3.50, and they were like kinda cold lol. Eventually they both got caught and got in trouble, but I took advantage while they were around. With things like that, you just tell the guy selling them for more that the other is selling for less than he actually is. He'll go even lower. When I was in middle school I put a girl out of business this way. I started selling lollipops that I bought in bags of 30 for 50 cents. They were like $3 $4 a bag weigh 40 in a bag. Because that's how a couple people were selling them. It was good money, but this one girl was like the main distributor of lollipops. Some kid told me she found out about me and started selling 3 for a dollar. So I did some math and realized I could sell them 25 cents each and took all her clients in about a week. Selling at least 4 bags a week as middle schooler I felt rich f and that's before I stepped into the chocolate industry. When I was in grade school I started making many clothes out of fleece and sewing them on my Hello Kitty sewing machine. I charged like a quarter for each outfit but it very quickly became an issue with people trying to steal my supplies and others not being able to purchase the clothes. It got shut down and I had to low-key sell the clothes at recess. Oh, I feel for you. We had a girl who used to sell Barbie clothes that way, but I think she had a real sewing machine and she reduced patterns from butterick and the like, so the clothes were modern, but unlike trademarked Barbie clothes in the store, affordable. She got shut down because she sold them in elementary school and it was asking for trouble. The seller was a on a roll, straight A kind of kid, and she stopped because she didn't want to have a bad mark on her record. That's such bull crap mo. Teachers be crushing budding entrepreneurs. Funny story, back in grade school we had these caught, being good paper passes, that teachers gave you on rare occasions. They would give them to kids, and put it in a raffle at the end of the month for a gift or something. Me and my friends got someone to let us see it. We printed out a bunch of them, and started to sell them 5 bucks a piece. Sooner or later, all the teachers and our principal got suspicious when all the bad kids started turning these passes in. So we decided to end our scam by its printing out 200 passes and handing them out randomly. We passed them around to so many people that we could never be traced. It was basically hyperinflation. The passes were being circulated around so much that the school ended up discontinuing the reward program. Isn't this a plotline in Diary of a Wimpy Kid lol? I thought the same thing. There were at least 5 folks selling weed on a large scale, and a few others selling other stuff. One guy sat next to me in history, and one day in class opened his bag, and showed me a very large mason jar just stuffed full of weed, next to a scale and baggers. These folks would always talk about running pounds on a train from California. People got caught, but were only put on a program. To keep track of them. Some other folks turned to stealing band equipment and computers and selling that off. For being one of the nicer public schools in town, it was full of unchecked crime. Also had a guy that would put different os on iPads for a fee, cause those were a thing. Not sure how black market that is though. 
100% totally get unchecked crime at an ISA school. We were the school in our district with the best test scores, rich kids, blah 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 drugs of all sorts were pretty much everywhere, and the staff was ambivalent as all frick towards it. I guarantee you some of the staff bought from them. One of the least suspecting buyers. Aside from the actual illicit things like drugs and smokes, we had basically a forerunner to you breeds. Seniors who were allowed to leave during lunch break and had a car would go pick up lunch someplace for a fee. This was especially good if you had a free period before lunch as you could run out, grab the food and the customer had hot lunch from wherever at the start of lunch period. Yes, we had this too. Only high school allowed off campus. Desperate middle schoolers would pay high prices for a bag of chips or something. Your middle school didn't sell chips. Candy. I swear the only reason kids were nice to me in 9th and 10th grade was because I always had candy in my backpack. Also, in the psych ward, lifesavers. If your parents gave a crap they'd bring you a bag and you'd get a Dixie cup full of them at break and trade flavors with other kids, or share with your friends who didn't have any. Different flavors were worth more. My school had a illegal candy trade, it was weird. I knew a lot about law, got hired as a lawyer, and had a court case where a kid tried to get free candy and everyone wanted his shaming, rumors, to be official. I'm still waiting for my $40. My high school a few friends, and I had a network of lockers with candy and soda, non-coke products, which were not allowed on campus. All kinds of candy, chips, and gum not available anywhere else on campus. Eventually I was threatened with expulsion if we kept selling Pepsi products on campus because it violated the school's contract with the coke distributor. They charged $1.25 for a 12 oz can of coke and on network only charged $1 for a 20 ounce bottle of Pepsi. I had a business deal through a company I was with so it was about $0.50 profit. I started selling Pepsi products to avoid expulsion cans at $0.75, which was still $0.50 profit. The school eventually passed a rule that no exchange of goods for money could occur between students, except fundraising activities, so I kept selling and printed some BS fundraising stuff for when the school administration was being doucher bags. They then changed it to school-sponsored fundraisers in my junior, grade 11, yeah. Overall, the network made over dollar sign 30k in the 3 years we were active, at ROUGHLY dollar sign 50 per transaction. Nowhere near what the illegal crap network made, the illegal crap was everything from pirated movies and software to weed, ecstasy slash MDMA, and heroin. They made bank, but all of them were eventually picked up by police. Entrepreneurship was not super rampant at my school, but it was lucrative for those of us who started our own unsanctioned ventures. I ran it. It was $1 soda cans out of unused lockers. I moved inventory almost weekly and had multiple kids helping me out in exchange for free soda. Made upwards of $3k over 4 years. Almost got caught once because a new student was given a lock I was using, but I managed to move inventory before a teacher found it. This was a huge school, mind you. I had probably 20 ish lockers. You are the first comment I've seen that had kids helping you with it. If I had gone to your school I would have done it for free. My payment is the thrill, the status and most importantly the feeling of running a black market. Selling things are one of the easiest ways to get status in school. Everybody knows you. One guy was literally running a convenience store out of his locker one year. One dude was selling money in gum packs. Some kids stole stuff from the school store and sold them online, I think. It was stuff like graphing calculators, so I think they probably made a pretty penny. And speaking of graphing calculators, people traded games and programs for them. There was a rumor that people were selling public speeches too but that's pretty boring. My friend did that first one in 8th grade. He'd buy candy, chips, and soda from the local dollar store and sell them from his locker. Those big ass round lollipops that come in funky flavors. I used to take a train to school every day and a kid would sell them two for a dollar. Probably gave him $200 personally over the course of middle school. I like lollipops. You can shoplift those like nothing. If he did, he made pure freaking profit off of everyone who bought them. Not that I've ever stolen, but a friend of mine was a bad boy who did crap like that. 
he basically explained that the small $1 stuff almost nobody cares about, and if they catch you, it's often easy enough to pretend to have forgotten you had it, he'd cover it with a second, also small purchase, and just pay for it that one time. Trades of stolen goods shoplifted and stored in caches only a few knew about. Like a stash of Zxxo mags and alternative comics in an artillery box, buried under that kid Gara's sandbox, or the petty cash stored in the knot hole of an oak tree on the property of a guy who was rumored to shoot kids who snuck into his backyard via said oak tree. There were some supplies for expendable things like caps for cap guns, illegal fireworks, M.A.T.S. and the like, candy, cigarettes, and drink. Mostly teens who needed the cash to buy things like pot. Our local pot supplier was also our local boy scout troop. Rumor has it, they were growing pot under the shady trees of the scout lodge which was always in a state of disrepair. There were also pot fields in a local private property called Black Pond, which was a summer camp for rich kids during the summer and boarding school for girls of the super rich the rest of the year. The frick, man. You're living in a Stephen King book. The cash stuffed in the knot hole of the oak tree near the creepy man's house had me thinking more of to kill a mockingbird. Back in elementary school, more specifically the last couple years, it was all about mechanical pencils. Having a lot of them was a symbol of power and wealth and trades would occur, based on how desirable the mechanical pencils were. However, if you had a really unique mechanical pencil, this was seen as even more powerful than having an abundance of mediocre ones. Theft would occur here and there and this stirred up the tension. Classes were formed, and social circles were reflective of this. In my span of middle school I found several dozen mechanical pencils over time, at least over 100 just off the ground, that would regularly be thrown away. I would always take the graphite out and occasionally the spring, since I got really good at doing that. I remember multiple casings being completely full of the stuff. When I was like 6 y slash o, my dad taught me how to grab ants with the tip of my fingers in a way that the ant couldn't bite me and I wouldn't hurt it. I'm talking about those big red leaf cutter ants. In my country we call them bachicus. Now, in my school's playground, there were a lot of these ants. I taught my friends how to grab them with the fingertips technique and we would spend all our recess time playing with ants. Eventually, as we were evil little curious kids, we found out that, if we plucked out their antennas, they wouldn't recognize each other, and would fight to death. Knowing this, we would spend our day looking for the best battle ants we could find, to make them kill each other for our entertainment. It was only matter of time, until we began making bits. We also, started selling each other the best warriors and more, and more kids joined the business. We didn't know that we were doing something wrong, but we kept it a secret from our teachers, only because they wouldn't let us play with insects. The place where we kept our fighters and the bowl we used as our Carlesium received the name of Bachicolandia, which translates to something like Antland. One day a kid found a really really big ant and sold it to another kid for like three times the price of a regular ant. When the big moment came, the big ant turned out to be a really bad fighter and got its head cut off by a normal size ant. The kid said that he got scammed and wanted his money back, so they started fighting. This got our teacher involved and she was horrified when she found out what we were doing and that was the end of Bachicolandia. That is freaking hilarious. Oh my god. Our black market was pretty much an actual black market. There were a few known kids who were basically you're in, you told them what you were looking for, and they would reach out to their guy, another kid who would remain anonymous. The guy would then steal whatever item it was you were looking for, don't ask from who, or where, give it to the handler, and you had 24 hours, to pick up your goods or they went to the highest bidder as they were too hot to hold on to for longer. There was a flat fee of $20 and that would change depending on how rare the item was or how expensive it was normally. You also took on all the risk. Once goods were exchanged, the students abided a strict no snitching rule so if the handler ever got picked up by the faculty because they had information you could assume that someone was going to pay you a visit later on. Honestly, it was a great system, and everyone understood the rules. If you're careless or leave your stuff unattended someone was going to take it, and you were probably never going to see it again. At the same time, did your stuff get stolen, need a replacement? $20 will get you one. 
Yes, I grew up in the hood and sometimes I miss it. Brothers sounds like a great freaking system. My school had a much less sophisticated system, but one of my friends was one of those ins. Now, because I was always chilling around him, I'd hear most the conversations, not that I really cared, so everyone also assumed I was in on all of it. Which led to some pretty funny rumors about me actually being a supplier, because I also happened to be friends with another in. I found the rumors more using than anything, especially when my friend jokingly started calling me boss. Ah, the good old days, where I would risk potential severe punishment just cause I found it funny to troll people and make them think I was actually important. Long distance phone calls. So this requires quite a bit of backstory. It's the 80s. AT&T has a monopoly on the long distance telephone service. MCI comes along and wants to get in on this lucrative industry, so it buys an interest in communication satellites. Only problem is that even with satellites, the calls still have to go through terrestrial lines for a little bit on each end. AT&T says no way and off to court they go. Eventually, AT&T sees the writing on the wall and voluntarily breaks up into multiple companies, the baby bells. The upshot of all that is that you could pick up a phone, dial an 800 number, put in your code and you were in business. Worked great, people loved it. However, if you had the time, you could just put in random codes and eventually one would work. If you were a computer nerd, you might even be able to write a program to do the heavy lifting and wake up every morning with a couple of working codes on your dot matrix printer. Now, combine that with a recent influx of Cuban and Central slash South American immigrants wanting to call home that would rather not pay $15 a minute, or whatever it was, you can easily sell those codes for $20 a pop. Yeah, they only work for a month or so until the legitimate owner of the code gets a dollar sign 7k phone bill, because Julio really loves his shire in Guatemala, but it's still not a bad deal at all. This is oddly wholesome. My friend, pretty infamous for his bullying, was detained by our strictest in charge, and was taken to her room. She threatened that she'd not give her water, which was a hoax, until he told her where he'd hidden the attendance register. She knew that he'd never give up, and sent him to the class. That guy stole the whole bunch of gate passes from her room. Gate passes let a student leave the school within the academic hours, which is the holy grail of fun experiences. He being dumb yet brazen, stole it, but asked me to lead the sale. We sold it for two days until the guard realized that something is wrong. Apparently 30 students felt unwell on the same day and the in charge allowed everyone to leave for home without parents supervision. He confessed to have stolen the gate passes and never took my name. He never even asked for his share. He did it only for the fun of it. I respect him a lot xx. Damn, I would've been able to keep that crap on the down low and sell them for a lot longer had I been selling them. You don't sell stuff like that in bulk. Sell a few here and there. The cash would last longer, you could sell them all over time, and have a few for yourself. <laughs> 